Hey everyone, my name is Amanda and I'm the Fun Size Reader and today I want to talk to you about The Wren in the Holly Library by K.A. Lind. The Wren in the Holly Library was my pick for Fun Size Book Club for June of 2024. We all read this together. If you are coming for book club, welcome. If you are coming after book club, welcome. Make sure to pay attention to when I talk about spoilers because there will be an entire book club discussion after my typical non-spoilery review. So if you are here for a review, just pay attention because spoilers will be coming. The Wren in the Holly Library is a Beauty and the Beast retelling in an urban fantasy setting, which is really unique. I feel like I haven't read a lot of Beauty and the Beast retellings in like a modern fantasy world. So that was very, very unique and different. It follows Kierce, who is a human, she is a thief. She gets put on a job to steal something from this house. She doesn't realize until she gets into the house that the person she is stealing with is a monster. And she therefore has broken the monster treaty, which is a protection law in this new world after the monsters had a great war and kind of took over the land that keeps humans and monsters separated. And because she has now broken this, she's put herself and people that she loves at risk. But the monster that she works with realizes her talent and actually hires her to become a thief for him and steal something he has been looking for for quite some time. Star rating. I gave this book three stars. I gave it three. I feel like I have a lot of spoilery reasons why I gave it three. So I'm not going to ruin that here. Overall, I thought it was a good Beauty and the Beast retelling. The urban fantasy setting was unique. It was something that I haven't really read a lot of, kind of that mixture of modern world with lots of fantasy characters. There were parts of the world building that I did find confusing, specifically the use of the term monsters. And so that kind of was a little bit different for me. But overall, it was a good Beauty and the Beast retelling. Spice rating on this is a three. There are a few explicit adult scenes, but it is not over the top. It does have a fairly sexual nature kind of throughout the book. Sexuality is used to build a lot of tension. There's a lot of mention of brothels and, and things like that. So it's not necessarily that it's constantly explicit, but there is a lot of adult content in this book. So I would definitely rate this one for adults, definitely for adults. Okay, so my spoiler free review, which I kind of mentioned a few things before, but I'm going to talk about a little bit more now. First off, I want to talk about how beautiful this book is. Like this is obviously the special edition that has the painted edges. They're gorgeous. I'm a little nitpicky about the color. I feel like the color of the pages doesn't exactly match the front. So again, like a little bit nitpicky about that, but it's still beautiful. And the actual cover itself, I really love. Super eye catching, super gorgeous. But then the inside, guys, like they put so much money into this book. This book was expensive because not only do we have a full blown Holly library all over the actual physical cover of the book, but then we have Pierce on the inside as well. Like there's so much that went into this book and it's beautiful, it's atmospheric. It is well worth the money if you love special and beautiful editions of buying the physical book if you love the book. Like I would definitely say this is one to have on your shelves. Like Red Tower did a great job with this physical book. Now because of that, I read it on my Kindle and I borrowed it from the library and I didn't want to read my special pretty edition so it sat on the shelf. When I talked about the world building and how there are some pieces of it that were a little wonky for me, there was a lot of world building to the point where some of it felt like info dumping to me. I don't know if anybody else felt that way. I was, like I said, reading it on my Kindle. I'm not quite sure how it looks in the physical book. So there were just kind of like, like pages with these huge long paragraphs. I just kind of found myself getting lost in the paragraphs because there was just so much information being told at me that kind of 
didn't really need to be there. Like there was a lot of stuff about she would mention one specific thing and then there was backstory to it and then another one specific person and then there was a ton of backstory and then we never saw that character again. And so I just was very confused why there was so much info dumping. It wasn't in a way that made me super connected to the world because it felt so laborious to read through the super long paragraphs. I felt it was taking me out of the story instead of dropping me deeper into the story. That was one of the big reasons why I had to give it a three. Like it was good. The story was good. It was entertaining. But I will say it did take me all month to read this book. It took me quite a while to get into it, even though I did like where the story went and how it was constructed. And overall, it was good. Um, but it did take me a long time to get into. And because of that, I only read one book in June. I literally started this the day that it came out and I finished it today. That was a little rough. But like I said, it was good. It was good. If you like books that have like the badass female main character, this is definitely one of those. Kierce is a strong, trained character who kind of takes care of her own. She's a thief, but she can defend herself. So if you like that in main characters, definitely. If you like the, you know, the deep, heavy sexual tension that starts off from the very beginning, definitely present in this book. So overall it was good, but there were some things that just kind of took away from it for me. Again, some of them are spoilers and I will talk about that right now. All right, so right now is the discussion part for the Fun Size Book Club June discussion section. I will be discussing specific things from this point forward. Okay, friends, like I said in my review, overall I liked the book-ish. I liked it. Was it my favorite? No. Do I think think that I am going to finish the series or continue with the series, I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided yet. And here are my main reasons why. I already talked about the world building and the getting lost in the paragraphs. I did talk to a friend. She's probably watching this video as I speak. And we were talking about how there was a large part of the book that kind of felt unedited. As someone who is deep in the dregs of editing, this is my biggest, biggest fear is having a book or having my readers perceive that my book has not been edited. So I felt really, really bad saying that, especially because I'm like in the midst of that and I know how hard it is and how rough it is. But I did feel that as a reader, I felt like there was so much extra that was put in that was not necessary. That really took me out of it. The Beauty and the Beast retelling was good. I will say this. I thought that the Beauty and the Beast retelling was going one way. And then about, I don't want to say it was three quarters through the book or halfway through the book, I switched characters around in my head. Obviously, I think Kierce is Belle and we are led to believe that Graves is the Beast right? He is this monster that lives in this house by himself. He's got these little caretakers that kind of help him out and nobody loves him. Everybody leaves him, all this stuff, right? So he, his perception is that he's the beast. And I get that. I see that. I feel like that was set up part way through the book, part way through the book. And then I, I felt this more at the end. I was like, huh, was I right? And then it did it actually switch or was it not what we we thought. I wondered if Lorcan was actually the beast. I I did think it. I did think it if if Graves was actually Gaston and Lorcan was actually the beast. I don't know because my original thought was Graves was the beast and Lorcan was Gaston. And so I because he had the little Declan guy and LeFou that was you know, chasing people around and doing his bidding. And there was there were comments that Lorcan said of like, I'm used to getting what I want. And that's very Gaston, right? But at the end, when you find out who they actually are, that Lorcan is the Oak King and Graves is the Holly King, and they kind of have this battle and this war going on, and they kind of fight at the end. It was very Beauty and the Beast, like very, very spot on Beauty and the Beast. But then Lorcan kind of changed, and he did this whole like calling her, you know, his his heartbeat or whatever the phrase was that he used. And I was like, is he actually supposed to be the beast? I don't know. I, I was very confused about the, the the character like 
retelling. So I don't even want to call that really a prediction or anything, but that is just something that I noticed. I also have never thought this before, and I told this to my husband as soon as I finished the book. It was very weird to me because I have read tons of Beauty and the Beast retellings, tons of them. Most of them are in very, very fantasy worlds. This is the first one that I've read a Beauty and the Beast retelling that is set in a human world 13 years post normal life, right? So the Monster Treaty was like 13 years before, and it's Beauty and the Beast retelling. So I was like, I have never had the thought. Why the fuck didn't she figure out that this was like Beauty and the Beast? She would have known the story. Come on, it was only 13 years later. You should have seen the Disney movie, at least as a kid. Like, it was just very weird to me. You got normal Times Square and normal technology and all these fancy things. Like, Disney didn't exist. Storybooks didn't exist. Like, you were reading all of these stories that Graves gave you, and you never once picked up on, huh, is this not like Beauty and the Beast? And I just thought that was a weird thing that I I popped into my head. And I was like, wouldn't she kind of maybe think about it, figure it out? I don't know. Because it was real. Because it was real life. Anyways, that was just something that at the end of the book, I was like, she should have known. She should have known that this was like Beauty and the Beast. So it was weird for me kind of reading a Beauty and the Beast retelling in a real world where the character would have known what Beauty and the Beast was. Okay, let's talk about the term monster. I thought the term monster was slightly misleading in this book. I understand why she used it. But when you're reading the term monster, especially in like the realm of monster romances that are popular right now, aliens, like actual monsters, right? These exist. Like, look at the covers. They are truly monsters. So I was kind of picturing him to actually look like a beast. He didn't. He looked like a human. So I was very jarred at the beginning, trying to figure out the world that like, no, they actually look like humans. They're just paranormal creatures. That was weird. That was weird for me to like wrap my head around because I kept thinking like, oh no, he's supposed to look like the beast, but he doesn't actually look like the beast. So the term monster, I didn't really love. The magic system I thought was good, fine, but there were elements of it that I was like, "Mm, this didn't add up in the book. Like this didn't make sense. Specifically, there were a couple instances where I just was like, huh, that seemed convenient. Like when Kirst saved her friends, right? And she magically just like comes into her magic and learns how to suck the powder, whatever it was called, wish powder out of Ethan. But she couldn't do anything with Graves. Now I get it. It's, you know, you're really trying to save this person. You love this person and it it compels you. But then when she just like throws wards up around their house after so no more red powder can get in, I was like, you just like knew how to do that. That would just seemed very out of place for me. And then the other part was when she so she had just broken the wards. They put in the little password to get into the room. So she entered a warded room where they captured her. And then she's brought to King Louis and he's continuing to say, nobody can pass my wards. And it's like, well, you just captured her in a warded room. So those those two instances just like didn't really add up to me. So the magic system was fine, but I do feel like there were a lot of pieces that didn't really mesh that I picked up on. So it was good. It was, you know, entertaining, but I felt like there were some holes in it. And I don't know if anybody else thought it or if there were explanations that you guys had or what, but please let me know. All right. This one, this is a comment that I'm going to make and people can hate me for it and I don't really care. I have a screenshot on my phone that I took of my Kindle and it bothered me because I have been a big, big proponent of saying that I don't love it. I don't love it when people just copy something that's popular. And I'm not saying this was plagiarized. That's not what I'm saying at all. Use certain elements that super famous authors use and then put them into their books because they want to pull from the other person's fame. Specifically, I have a picture of a page on my Kindle where four names that are used in Sarah J. Mass's books all appear within a few lines of each other. And that just rubbed me the wrong way. I did not love that. And I know Sarah J. Mass uses a lot of mythology and culture and stories in her, especially in her recent books. But I'm talking about 
Declan, Ethan, Emmett, and Lorcan were all on the same page. I think that was all four of them. I can't remember. That's off the top of my head. But it was like some from Crescent City, some from Throne of Glass, all on the same page. She used the, the name Dannon, which I know in this book it was connected to like an old story. And I don't know if that story actually exists, but we all know Rune Dannon. It just stood out to me. It stood out like a sore thumb because what I tell people is if I see too much similarity to Sarah J Mass, I'm just going to compare it to Sarah J Mass. I don't like doing that, but if I see the similarity intentionally, Beauty and the Beast retelling, and then all of a sudden tons of names from her books are being thrown into this, I'm going to I'm going to compare it. I'm going to compare it in my head mentally. So it didn't hold up to that comparison in my mind. It was still good. It was an enjoyable book. It's a beautiful book, but it didn't hold up to that comparison for me. That was called out. It was it was plain as day right in front of me. The romance. I think this is the last thing that I want to talk about because this video is getting very long. I'm sorry. The romance. I don't know if I felt it, which kind of goes back to what I was saying with is Lorcan really the beast? Because all of the steps were there. All of the things were there, but I didn't feel the romance as much as I have in other books. And I don't know if that was intentional or if that was just how it played out in the book for me. I was sad when Kierce left and you got the pages about um, how torn up Graves was that she left. I was sad, but I wasn't devastated. So I don't know if the romance just like didn't hit for me or if it was intentional for the overall story. Don't know. Along those lines, I do not like this trend. And, and Jennifer L. Armentrout does it too. She like somehow gets away with it. There's this trend in fantasy writing in what's selling right now of over-sexualizing certain situations. Did the wish powder really need to be like an orgy party to get them having tension and building the romance tension throughout the book? I don't think so. I don't really think it needed to be that. That's what's selling right now. So I get it, but I'm not a fan of the trend. I also wanted to say just stylistically, I don't know if that anybody else had this reaction when they were reading, but like I read a lot of third person books. There is a way to have the chapters follow a different perspective in third person and not have to call it something else. So like the chapters that were named interlude, I was jarred. I was like, wait, what? What does this mean? Like I, I was reading it also very late at night, but it was like chapter one, chapter whatever, chapter, and then interlude. And I was like, what? What does that mean? And so I was confused. And then it was a different person every interlude almost. And I was like, well, you could have just called it the next chapter because this is third person. I, I can pick up that it's about somebody else. That was just something stylistically and organization wise that stood out to me that as a reader kind of jarred me a little bit. What are you going to do? I ended up having a lot more to say than I thought. I was going to say, and and I don't want it to come off as like super negative because I, I thought the book was fine. I thought it was good. I don't think it was going to make my list of favorite books of the year, but I think it was a good fantasy book. It was different for sure. I'm glad I picked it. I'm glad I read it. It's beautiful. I wish all books looked like that. But yeah, I hope you guys liked it a lot more than I did. Still gave it three stars though. Like still good. Just nitpicky things. Nitpicky things because they just stood out to me. Like I just needed to say them because they stood out to me. Anyways, as always, I will put a link for the book down in the description below. If you don't have the pretty edges, I'm not sure if they've sold out yet. I know they were all in stores, so you can check them out. If you've stuck through book club this long, thank you so much. I know this is a long video and I talked the entire time, but thank you for reading with me as always. And thank you all for showing up. I know sometimes I cannot type it fast enough when it comes to the end of this video. So I'm saying thank you now. Make sure to stick around for the next video to find out what we're reading in the month of July. If you like reading fantasy and romance books, I post reviews on my channel weekly, so make sure to click like and subscribe if you want to be notified the next time I post a video. Thanks so much for reading along for Fun Size Book Club with me this month, and I'll see you guys next time.